AC circuits, what we mean is an actual AC source hooked up to a resistor or inductor or a capacitor, okay? So it's represented with this symbol like a sine wave, and I can hook it up to a resistor and an ammeter, or I can hook up an AC source to a capacitor and an ammeter, and I could even have the oscilloscope here. Here's the, let me, let's say OSC is the, my symbol for oscilloscope. I can hook up the oscilloscope across the resistor and measure its voltage uh, going up and down. And the ammeter will measure the root mean square current. And I could do the same thing here, the oscilloscope hooked up across the capacitor. I can do inductor, oscilloscope across the inductor. Now I could do some combos, RL, RC. LC and RLC, okay? So this is a ammeter uh, oscilloscope. Now what I could do, here's a good thing we could do, we could have the oscilloscope, one, one, or one outlet of the oscilloscope going to across the resistor and then one of them going across uh, both the resistor uh, and the inductor. That way we can compare the total voltage to the resistor voltage and confirm our equations, okay? And then you could go uh, resistor and inductor, ammeter again, and again you could go oscilloscope, one of them going to the, across the resistor and then one of them going across what we do is we have the common outlet of the oscilloscope going across from both outlets, going across to one side of the resistor, and then the positive goes here, and then the other positive goes there. You see, that's the way to do it, to measure the resistor and the, the total. So here's in resistor inductor, R and uh, C. Now we could do uh, L, L and C. Or you could do it like this. Now this one, I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna do this one uh, because this one, the inductance has its own internal resistance. And I don't think it's gonna work as well, just like we saw in a minute, you know? So I'd rather put an external resistor so that the external resistor will dominate the internal resistance of the inductors. So it works better when you have an external resistor. But the the theoretically, it still works. I mean, all the equations works, but it's just harder to illustrate it in real life. Then we'll have the all, all three. The big, that's the big one. We'll and then oscilloscope again. So common outlet goes here, and then positive goes here. The positive will measure all three, and then the other positive will just go across resistor. Okay, so, and you guys will be doing this in the lab too, more, much more detail too. Okay, so let's start with the simplest, simplest one we can imagine, just the resistor. So the, the source here is giving V source is going to be V max, and let's say it's a sine function, omega t. And let's say the phase angle is zero, so uh, sine omega t. <clears throat> now, if we use the typical source like this one, I can use this one here as an AC, uh, AC outlet here. Let me turn this off. Go to AC mode.
If I use a typical source, what's the W of the typical source hooked up to this? What's the W and the V, uh, the v max? So uh, a typical outlet The W is going to be 2 pi F, and the F is going to be 60 cycles per second. Okay, well, that's the the AC that we get into our plugs. Okay. So 60 cycles per second. So the typical W will be 120 pi. So I'll illustrate it with the typical W uh, so we can see if it works, if it's right or not. Um, and then what's the Vmax for the typical outlet? Okay, in America we use 120 volts, but when we're saying 120, that's the root mean square voltage. The max is root two times that. Remember how I was saying the one that we, uh, the, it measures is the Vmax, uh, I max over root two. So what the, the max is always what we measure times root 2, okay? So the typical source then, the source for the outlets is the 120 root 2 sine of 120 pi, uh, no, yeah, 120 pi t. So there were 120 appears twice, okay? So what's the current in the circuit going to read? The current, well, if there's only uh, one, um, if there's just a resistor, it's going to be voltage divided by resistance. So whatever the resistor is, let's just make for simplicity, let's make the resistor uh, uh, 100 ohms. It'll be easy to work with 100. So if it's 100, it should be 1.2. And since the current is proportional to V, they're proportional. To, so the current in the resistor is just simply the voltage divided by the resistance. So therefore, the current and the voltage of the source are in phase, right? So the voltage, uh, the voltage of the source will also equal to the voltage of the resistor, since, since there is a, uh, since there is only one, one thing. So VR is just equal to VS. So let me put it this way: uh, I is equal to VR over R, and since VR is equal to uh, VS, therefore it's just identical. So if we plot VR. VR looks like this, and the maximum it goes up to is 120 root 2, and the minimum it goes down to is negative 120 root 2, okay? The, and the current looks like what? Well, cur current is simply VR over R, so it's just in phase, except it has a less amplitude. It's 1.2, right? So it's got less amplitude, it's like this. Now let me prove to you or explain why this root two thing, you know, square root of two thing. The power that uh, is dissipated in the resistor is equal to uh, the power as a function of time is equal to the voltage as a function of time times the current times as a function of time, right? V is equal, P is equal to VI. Okay, so if we multiply those, what do we get here? We get 120 root 2 times 1.2 root 2. So times 1.2 root 2 times sine squared of sine squared of 120 pi t. Let me write this a little bigger. Okay? 